Welcome back to Physics with Miyoshi. Today we're going to talk a little bit about rigid bodies in equilibrium, something we also call statics. Statics is just uh, a way to talk about things when they're not in motion. Uh, so if we have something like this, here's a, a little example we'll talk about in a moment, but uh, I have a diver on the board and we have the fulcrum where it rotates around and this guy here is held, held down by here. If this guy, if the, the diver's not moving, he's just standing there, then why does this, why is there no acceleration? Why, so what's not happening here? Or what's, what's happening? Well, um, first of all, we have to know a couple things, a little bit about torque. Uh, you can add torques just like you can add forces. Uh, you can just add them vectorially. And most of the time, if we're talking about something like this, we just have some that are positive torques. They're going, um, pointing out from the board, and some of them are negative torques. They're pointing into the board. And we can look at that. And you also have to think about torque as where you're rotating around. So if I have something, if I have three different forces here, one going down, holding this board down, one pushing up, keeping this upright, and the other one coming down, uh, assuming this guy is um, weightless or negligible, negligible weight in the beginning, um, then I have to figure out where the point of rotation is going to be. Now I can make it that point of rotation anywhere and sum up all those torques, or I can pick a specific spot and sum it around that one. And um, if we think about torques, and one thing I forgot to mention before is if I have a torque, if I have a R and its force is going directly opposite or directly with it, then there can't be any uh, torque that way. So the torque in that case when they're parallel must be zero because R cross uh, F in this case, this is F, must be zero when they're parallel. Okay? Um, the other thing I forgot to mention before is that when I do torque is R cross F, uh, and without the vector notation, we can look at that as R times F times the sine of theta, which theta is the angle between them. And if I had that picture I had before, Oftentimes I'll be like this. Okay? So this is R and this is F. Okay, so let's look at um, how equilibrium works here. How a little bit of statics. So in statics, when I have equilibrium, the main oops, the main point is that as I add up all my four, add up all my torques. they're going to be zero. And when I add up all my forces, they must be zero as well. And that's why there's no acceleration going anywhere either um, linearly or rotationally. Okay, so let's look at this little guy here for an example of how this would work out. If I have my diving board and I have a force that's going up, I'll call that, uh, what did I call that before, F2. And I'll have a force coming down, that's, this guy holding it back, that's going to be called F1. And I have the weight of my diver. I'll just call that weight of the diver. Okay, and the example I've got, let's call this uh, 530 newtons. And we're going to try to figure out, oh, and we know the distance here between here and here. I'll call that L. One is 3.90 meters, and I'll call this guy here L2, and that is 1.4 meters. Okay, so if I look at this, if we look at this together, um, we can look at the forces, figure out the forces. There's only one direction in the y direction, vertically, and we're going to look at the torques, and they're either going to go around one way, if I use my right hand rule, they're going to either force it this way or force it this way, and we'll just have to figure out where we want to pick our value. So, looking in the, at our forces, the sum of our forces is zero. So we have F1, F2, and WD. So let's call up positive. We have then F2 um, minus F1, because they're going down, minus the weight of the diver must be zero. We know the way the diver is 530, but that's about all we can do. Okay? 
Then we can look at the sum of our torques. Now, the sum of the torques, when we look at the sum of the torques, we probably would want to choose a nice, neat position where this guy is um, going to rotate around. So I don't want to choose something like here or here. Uh, I could choose that guy there if I'd like. I could even choose the guy at uh, that point there. But um, then I have two equations and two unknowns, and I can still figure it out, but it makes it a little bit harder. So let's pick something nice and easy. We'll pick this point here to rotate around. And then we'll sum up our torques. So, since this force is acting right at the fulcrum point or the rotation point, then that, that's got to be zero. So that torque there is going to be zero. I'll do this guy here. That's uh, force two. Since it's going up, that's going to create a positive torque. Uh, so that will be F2 times L2. Oops, and then we'll go... Since this one's coming down, it's going to have a negative torque minus... Uh, WD times L2, or L1 rather, and that's going to be zero. Okay, so then if we, um, we can either rearrange our, our equation or, then we, or we can plug in our numbers. I like to rearrange my equation because I'll solve for F2. I know L1, I know L2, and I know WD, so I'll just solve for F2. So F2 um, times L2 is WD times L1, just moving that to this side, adding WD times L1 to both sides, and I'll divide both sides by L2, and so I end up with F2 is equal to uh, WD L1 divided by L2. When we plug in our numbers, that's 530 newtons times L1 is 3.9 meters, divide that guy by 1.4 meters, and I end up with something like, that's my numbers here, uh, F2 then is 1476. Point something. Oops, point 0.4. Newton. Okay? Um, if we look at our units, our meters cancel out or they divide out, and so we're left with Newtons there. Now we can just plug that guy back into this equation right here, and then we have, then we can find F1. So F1 then would be, um, put that on the other side, and that's F2 minus WD. So F2 we just found that out is 1476.4 newtons minus our WD is 530 newtons. So our F1 then ends up being, what is it, end up being? Uh, 946.4 newtons. So it's a very simple example of how we can use. Um, statics, how we can use torques and forces to figure out um, what our final forces are in a, a static equilibrium condition where nothing is moving, we're not rotating, nor are we translating, so we can figure things out simply by knowing that the sum of our forces has to be zero and the sum of our torques must be zero. Uh, plugging in our numbers, making a couple equations and plugging in numbers, this uh, time was fairly simple. Again. When you do this, make sure or try to try to select something that makes sense for where you're going to rotate around. Uh, make sure when you sum your torques, you uh, sum them from the same point. You don't want to take the force. You don't want to say you're going to start out here and take the rotations, and then take the rotations around here, take them all from the same location. Okay. So a very simple example. We'll do another one here in a little bit. Um, thanks for tuning in for Physics with Miyoshi and finding out a little bit about statics and rigid bodies in equilibrium. See you again next time.